Hey guys, this is Edward here. Just uh, doing a little short review and unboxing video of the Dark Rock 4 from Be Quiet. CPU cooler, 200 TDP. Uh, really awesome uh, heatsink I'm going to be installing on the computer of mine. Here's a quick shot of the computer it's going to be installed in. And here's a view of the inside where this cooler is going in on the socket 20113 motherboard. Uh, currently using a Xiaomi CPU cooler and running an Intel i7-5930K. I know this PC is a little dusty. I'm going to have to go ahead and dust that up before I install this. Went ahead and already opened the lid here, so I'm just going to go ahead and take this out piece by piece. Here's the fan. And on the side here we have a couple of instruction manuals and mounting kits and screws. And over here we have a massive Be Quiet heatsink. Um, actually weighs quite a bit, so uh, struggled to get it out of here this way, so just do what we usually do. Flip it over and just uh, let it fall out on its own. There's a little uh, CPU area down there where it makes contact. And here's the cooler itself. Really beautiful, I must say. This Be Quiet fan is 135 millimeters. Uh, I believe it's the Silent Wings, uh, not the Pure Wings version of the fan. Four pin connector, PWM motor. Connects directly to the board and goes up, the speed goes up and down, considering the temperature. Of course, you can always change that on your own, set things up on your own too, as well. Here we have the heatsink, uh, which comes with its own little Phillips screwdriver. Now, I do remember from some pictures and whatnot that the Dark Rock 3 actually uses a hex screw, uh, unlike this one, these are just regular Phillips screws, which uh, could be a real pain to sometimes remove and even install, as I'll show you later. The um, CPU coolers on my computer right now uses a hex screws, and that's really something. So big improvement here. Kind of interesting to actually include the screws. A uh, driver here, pretty nice, has, has the Be Quiet logo on, and yep, like I said, it is a Phillips screwdriver for the screws there. And over here we have some manuals and some mounting kits inside, depending on which socket you're going to use. I'm going to have to remove those. And um, this is actually a really neat thing to actually have added. Not necessary, but it was nice. Let's go ahead and install this up. Outside the little cardboard box is the mounting kits for different sockets, both AMD and Intel. And uh, here's another look at the heatsink. Got some rubber on it as well, too, to avoid um, vibration from the fan. Now, I did see online somewhere that you can install a fan on this side, too. But uh, there's no any rubber there, so the fan may actually pick up some vibration on the other side. I um, guess that's an option if you want to look into it. And uh, over here, just a bunch of manuals in different languages. Uh, Spanish, English, Russian, Deutsch, French, and Polish, I believe, there. So, uh, pretty neat. And a picture of the little marble that we're working on here. Kind of like free advertising going on right here at the moment. <laughs> so, um, put these aside. And uh, we'll start going ahead and install this uh, fan. Instead of mixing all the brackets and screws all to bunch up together, they actually split them for Intel and AMD sockets separately. Over here we have uh, just uh, some uh, thermal paste. But it's actually a really big plus uh, in my eyes. Here we have an uh, instruction manual to see which brackets, which screws go to which socket. Um, how to attach or anything. Now I did learn slightly the hard way that <laughs> the fan's supposed to be attached after you install. So in this case, we will be using um, Intel for the socket 20113. And uh, we'll go ahead and take those out and start getting them together for installation. So I got the old CPU cooler, the Zaman cooler, removed. And uh, here's the CPU with uh, thermal paste already ready to go. So now time to install some brackets for this particular socket over here. And then once the heat sinks on, there's also one bracket that goes across and attaches to both brackets across like that, basically. I'll go ahead and get this going. Got the brackets here installed already. Now I do have to 
say that the instruction manuals actually didn't really do too much justice which direction to put these brackets in. Um, you can actually put them either way, but uh, as you can see here, but if you do put them the wrong way, this bracket, cross bracket here, will actually not be aligned correctly and won't screw on to hold the heatsink down. Just something to keep in mind when you're going ahead and install this, whichever socket you're using, if it does require this uh, cross bracket over here, which probably will. Here's the heatsink uh, installed and mounted now, and actually screw it in. Just be sure you put this heatsink in correctly. But be quiet, logo should obviously be facing you and readable. Um, the only thing is, be sure to keep in mind, you have to install a fan after the heatsink is installed. Um, you can probably tell how tricky it is. You won't be even able to screw it on the, the right side there. So let's go ahead and get this fan installed on. So definitely tricky to install this fan on while the heatsink is already installed on the board. And um, over here, it actually does partially block one memory slot once the fan's installed. So um, if you actually do have pretty uh, larger memory chips, it'll probably block it. One little good thing about this is that when you do install the fan, you actually can move these little brackets a little lower, a little higher to adjust the height of the fan. So you can actually bring them a little higher and create some clearance for memory chips that might go in that slot if you are using it. So the finished product over here looks pretty nice and stable. Um, I don't believe it will cause any vibration of the rubber underneath those fans. Uh, but yeah, definitely it's a little troublesome to install. So this will be really great to see in action and uh, see what results we get, get out of it. Here's what she looks like on now. The fans are actually really quiet. I can actually hear the case fans. Um, in the front and the back a little louder than this fan obviously not even at full speed though but I've had played with it at full speed and it actually works pretty well I can actually hear ambient sounds from outside my place uh, louder in this fan even with the cover off as you can see sorry the lighting's not so great I'm actually shining a LED flashlight in here I did plan to get some LED lighting to this case probably some uh, nice green color I got the little green thing going with this particular computer setup and um, There is a little clicky fan in there, and I did actually, I do believe that's probably one of the other fans, uh, either in the rear or in the back. i got to sort that out eventually, but all in all, great heat sink. Looks at, matches uh, the interior is pretty, pretty well. Um, probably go ahead and show some temps. Uh, I did look at the temps on the, the BIOS and also the controller I use uh, from MSI. This, this is a particular board. It is an MSI board. And uh, I'm so I saw a good two to three degree Celsius drop. Um, I would say at boot up it's somewhere between 38 and 41. Maybe at low it jumps between like 44 and about 49. Sorry, I really can't show you those numbers. I guess maybe I can do a couple of screenshots in just a moment. Um, But so far, definitely a very, very satisfying installation, and uh, I really did like the, um, how quiet this is. The Zalman cooler, I actually did have a, two Zalman coolers installed on two of my computers, and they're going to be replacing it. In case anyone was wondering what the second Be Quiet CPU cooler is for, it's actually going to be for another computer, and that's going to be my main PC, which I've mentioned in another video, and one of these days I'll definitely do a little video on it. So. This was definitely a successful installation. Again, just a couple of, uh, to recap a couple of things, um, just be sure you get those, you put those brackets correctly. Um, the instruction manual does not do, do too well justice about installation, which direction to put it in. And, um, oh, definitely for sure. Even if I'm using this on a 20113 socket motherboard, obviously put those other brackets away sometime down the line you're going to end up using it for something else like AM4 or some future socket that's compatible with brackets that you've accidentally lost or misplaced and screws. I've actually done that a couple of times with Zalman CPU coolers and uh, yeah, not too pleasant. <laughs> Try to get as close as I can see if you guys can hear anything in there.
Well, I definitely hope you like this unboxing installation video here. And a small little quick review of this cooler. Um, like I said, I'll probably post a shot or two of some um, temperatures and whatnot. And uh, if you like this video, just go ahead and like it. And I'll definitely have some more installations, unboxing videos to post on later on. Thanks again for watching. Yeah, don't forget to take that off.